welcome to Lowenwood Forest. Here is where we homeschool our five kids, but also we are turning into a homestead. So my husband today is using the sawmill and he wants to share it all with you. So today we're doing some milling um, of our lumber. So we're cutting an apple orchard over at the front of the property. We cut a big spruce down yesterday. We have three logs from it. Uh, this was the base, the bottom log. They're all ten and a half feet roughly. We measured them. This was the third one up and then we've milled up and cut up um, the second log that we took. The top of the tree is just uh, off to the side. Um, the nice thing is we bought the sawmill so that we could turn these lovely trees that we need to cut down into something productive because we can't burn these in the fireplace. So um, spruce wood is your regular framing lumber so this is uh, perfect use for it. And why can't you use it as firewood? Because it's full of sap and if you burn it in your fireplace it'll just spit 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 and pop 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 and it gets gums up your fireplace. So Will it uh, create a fire uh, chimney fire? It will put a lot of creosote and gunk in your chimney so yes eventually it would you can't keep it clean okay uh, this is the sawmill we bought it in september 2018 i've only used it a couple of times so it's finally sort of warm mid-february and we had some trees and we're going to cut them up uh, so it's made by woodland mills they're designed in canada i think they're made in china but they ship over here and we bought it in port perry about three hours from here close to where andrew's grandparents live uh, it isn't a big one, it's their smallest one they make. It'll do a 22 inch diameter log and mill it down. And we can actually do 16 feet though. I've got most of the rails dug out, um, but there's another probably three feet past that end. Um, I'm just not milling anything that long right now, so I have no need to dig it out. And it was buried in three feet of snow. So it took a while to dig it out. Um, it has a seven horsepower motor, turns a large, uh, the. The bandsaw is about 10 feet long and uh, yeah, it cuts through trees great. Um, we use all these little things to secure the log to the platform and uh, and mill away. And I think my wife already showed you some of the wood we milled. We're gonna do some more, the two logs left. Um, pretty easy to use. There's uh, height adjustments with measuring on it. So you just crank it up, get your log set uh, with it on, obviously. Once the log's set, you just push it through and it'll cut through. It just slides along the rails on uh, on four wheels. And we'll show you some of the stuff we make. Today the project is shelving. So I know my wife is very excited for that so that she can do more storing of things. And uh, there'll be lots more in the summer. Kids tree houses, we wanna make a carport, a uh, woodshed to store our firewood in, a bridge over our creek in the back uh, on our trail. So tons of uses for it and obviously we have enough trees and with all the gardening we want to do and stuff there's lots more to cut down and we don't want them to go to waste so we're going to turn them into lumber hooray hooray <laughs> how often do you use that chain three times a week and i've just jammed my leg in here uh, yep seriously uh, so i use it for moving logs when we cut down the tree i use it a lot I use it to pull our trail groomer behind the ATV. Yeah, all the time. If you live in the country, have a chain. When Jackson had his birthday party and his friend's uh, van drove off the driveway, we used the chain to pull it with the ATV out. So, all the time, all the time. So you recommend homesteading, you need a chain. 10 feet of galvanized chains with the little hooks on it so you can hook the chain in a loop. Use it all the time, yeah. All right, so we've rolled our log on. It was really heavy and I was lazy and, or I guess not lazy, didn't use the tractor, which made it way harder than it needed to be. Um, so once we get the log on the rails, we've got uh, backstops to hold it from rolling off the back. Great. Here, and we do have higher ones that can come up, but I don't need them. So I got one on either end. And then these, which we twist in, 
hold the log either way. This log really can't move. And then we just start uh, milling to square it first. We'll do this side and we'll rotate it 90 degrees and do it next side. So then we would have two 90 degree uh, or one 90 degree corner with two rounded sides over here. And we'll roll it again, end up with three uh, 90 degree sides and then one more left. And then you just start milling your wood for Andrea's shells. So yeah, then you start, start making boards. Then we start square. making boards. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. The first few cuts are just, well, they're like those are just bark that we're basically cutting off. You can't really use them for a whole lot because the one side's super rounded. So anyway, we're going to get started. Not very difficult to start. Uh, so we've got an on off switch, a choke that's fully choked on, choke is off. Um, you need the choke on when you're starting in the cold. It's not, it's been running for uh, an hour. So I just had it off for a bit. So it should start one pull. Good. The next thing we do, even though it's noisy, is we set the height. So it's way too low. We just want to take off, we'll go a little lower, but we want to take off about an inch of the log to start squaring it. And uh, we'll show you how that's done. It's a tad noisy. I'm going to add some music. But it's quiet enough, it doesn't wake sleeping girls. So thank you for my water, Andrea. Uh, she filled up my water jug. The water is used. Uh, the water is used to lubricate the blade. Uh, so if you look on the top of the sawmill, there's a, a translucent plastic container. Uh, it holds about four liters of water. So we're gonna put this in, fill it up. And what happens is I can turn the lever. It runs a, a water line down from it to the blade. So it drips directly on the blade. It helps keep the blade lubricated. Keeps it from getting too hot. Uh, while you're cutting. So it just makes the whole saw work much, much easier. Um, it's warm enough that I can use water. On colder days in the winter, I have to use uh, car uh, windshield washer antifreeze stuff that's good to minus 40. But today it's just a little above zero, so we'll be fine. <laughs> 